Valentine Tori presented by Laura and Sydney. Palatine Tori are a hyperostosis or bony growth on the hard palate. They're a hyperplasia of cortical bone with a limited amount of bone marrow covered by poorly vascularized mucosa. They are non neoplastic and non pathologic. Palatine Tori have a slow progressive growth that can stop abruptly at any time. The underlying cause of the tori is unresolved, but it is generally thought to be environmental or hereditary. Palatal tori are usually incidental findings during a routine clinical exam. They are most often asymptomatic, but the patient may present with phonetic disturbances, mucosal ulceration, accumulation of food deposits, or prosthetic instability. Palatal tori are visible on routine clinical exams. They appear as an exophytic growth along the palatine suture covered by pale mucosa. They range in size from a few millimeters to nearly covering the entire hard palate. They are a variety of shapes including flat, nodular, and spindle shaped. They are usually bilaterally symmetric. There is an increased occurrence of palatal tori during the middle ages. They rarely occur in children. The average age of onset is 34 years old. They are more common in females. They occur in 12 to 14 percent of the population. 50 percent of patients with mandibular tori also have palatal tori. However, only 30 percent of patients with palatal tori also have mandibular tori. There is an increased occurrence in Eskimos, Japanese, and North Americans. Radiographic findings. Palatal tori are located above or near the apices of maxillary teeth. They have a well-defined radiopaque border. They are usually round or nodular in shape. They have the internal radiopacity of bone. They do not affect surrounding structures. They are usually a single entity and they range in size from a few millimeters to many centimeters. These radiographs show a palatal tori as a radiopaque entity above the maxillary incisor apices. The treatment options for edentulous and dentate patients differ. For the edentulous patient, palatal tori may be removed for improved comfort and stability of maxillary dentures, and the dentures can be constructed around or engaging a palatal tori, as seen in the picture. For the dentate patient, removal is not justified unless the bony material can be used to fill a defect in the jaw, it's an aesthetic concern, or the patient is experiencing speech disturbances, retention of food, or sensitivity or ulceration of the thin mucosa. The best outcome for the dentate patient is no treatment. It avoids the surgical complications and chance of postoperative infection such as a maxillary sinus perforation, hematoma, bone necrosis, or palatine bone fracture. For the success of a maxillary denture, it's often necessary to remove a palatal tori, and there is no urgency for the removal, but if it is removed, Two to three months of healing should occur before fabrication of the denture, and the removal should be done by an oral maxillofacial surgeon under general anesthesia. Our first differential interpretation is an osteoma of the facial of the maxilla. Both palatal tori and osteomas appear as well-defined radio-opaque entities, but upon clinical exam, osteomas occur on the facial aspect of the maxilla. The second differential interpretation is exostoses. Both appear as radio-opaque entities, but upon clinical exam, exostoses are on the facial aspect of the maxilla. The third differential is a salivary gland tumor of the hard palate. Both will appear as exophytic growth, but a salivary gland tumor will be softer on palpation and less radio-opaque. Using both clinical exam and radiographs, palatal tori are easily differentiated and correctly diagnosed. These are the resources we used for our presentation. All resources were determined to be accurate and contain general information as well as current research about palatal tori.